trying to do for our clients, our customers, and also our audience that we have following our YouTube channel is we're trying to give them best practice HR solutions. Like let them know a little bit about something here, something there, and really small tidbit amounts. And so we do kind of what we call the shortstop HR. It's a 10 minute section on something specific. So that thing today we're gonna discuss is independent contractors versus employees and kind of what that looks like for an employer and what the risks are. Okay. Before we jump into that, um, I would like you to share a little bit about who you are and maybe your firm and just kind of give me some background on you. Yeah, well, my name is Colin Walker. I'm an attorney at a law firm called Fairfield and Woods, which is in Denver. Um, we have about 45 attorneys and we handle all kinds of um, cases and legal issues, um, mostly for Colorado businesses. We are we have one office in Denver, so we are truly a Colorado law firm and we work with Colorado uh, businesses and people. And um, I have been practicing for a little more than 20 years now. I started my career as a criminal prosecutor in Baltimore, Maryland. I did that for about four years and then I moved out here and came to this firm. And since then I've been doing um, civil and commercial litigation, but especially employment law and also advising employers on employment practices and policies. We enjoy having the relationship with you, so thank you for coming and spending some time with us. My pleasure, thank you for having me. Okay, so one of the issues that we see companies establishing in their workforce is that they misclassify independent contractors, yeah. thinking that they don't have to classify them as employees. Yeah. So can you explain very high level the difference between an employee and independent contractor? Yeah, this is uh, such a timely and important issue. Um, it comes up all the time and a lot of people get it wrong. A lot of employers get it wrong. So um, you can't just call someone an independent contractor. Uh, you have to have uh, you have to meet certain requirements to do that. And it, it's governed by several different statutes, federal and state statutes. Um, so it gets kind of complicated, but but basically to to call someone an independent contractor, that person has to be in an independent trade or occupation and has to be uh, controlling the, the, the way that the work gets done. So think of it like this. If you hire a, a carpenter to put a deck on your house, um, that, that is a person that is a professional. Um, you're not training that person, you're not telling him or her what to do. Um, that person has the experience to build that deck. That person has uh, his or her own tools, uh, chooses the materials to use. Now you may tell that person, here's what I want. Here's how big I want it to be. Here's what I want it to look like. Um, here's when I want it to be done. But that's about it. Other than that, that carpenter decides um, you know, what materials to use, what tools to use, how to put that deck together and to make a good product. So uh, the same thing with, with any kind of uh, person that an employer is going to classify as an independent contractor. It may be a different kind of work. It may be, for instance, it might be an accountant or it might be a computer programmer or it might be an artist. Um, but you're not telling that person how to do it. You're just telling that person what to do and then they decide how to do it. That's what an independent contractor is. Absolutely. And one of the questions that we tend to start with when we're asking an employer is, do you set their hours? Do you right. tell them when they're going to be here? That's right. That's Are they only here every day? <laughs> because if that's the way that it is, yeah. then chances are likely they're really not independent of you. Yeah. And we need to different. look at their classification. when they're trying to bring on an independent contractor versus employees in order to be certain that they're classifying these workers correctly? Yeah, yes, there's, there's a, a lot of things you have to think about, but uh, one of the first ones that I think about is, is this person gonna work full time for this company for an extended period of time? If that's the case, bells and whistles need to go off in your head. This is probably not an independent contractor situation. Is this somebody, on the other hand, that, that you're hiring for a project, like like I mentioned before, like a um, an artist. Maybe you have some kind of a concept that you want to work on, maybe for marketing or something like that, and you want to hire an artist to help you with, with drawings or trademarks or maybe some, you know, a computer kind of work. Um, and so you're hiring that person to do, to, to 
make that to, to help you with that concept and then that's it then he or she's going to go away and do, do work for some other client that's the kind of thing that would be an independent contractor the other thing to think about is does this person offer um, his or her services to the public generally um, in other words in the past have, have has this person done this kind of work for other companies and after this project is complete for you will this person probably go on and do this um, for somebody else um, that's that's a good sign of an independent contractor the other thing is does this person have a business card or a website or does this person advertise if that's the case then it might well, very well be an independent contractor so can you share a little bit about why there's no such thing as a 1099 employee this is so important. So many people get hung up on this. Um, and it's one of my pet peeves. It is so misguided. 1099 is a tax form. It's a form 1099. It is not a status for a worker or an employee or anything else. It's a tax form. Okay. So if there are all these compliance items to consider, why do you think employers do classify people as independent contractors rather than employees when they really should? Yeah, well, there's tax benefits. I mean, you don't have to do the withholdings, FICA and all that stuff. I um, mean, there's benefits for the employees too. They don't have to, uh, you know, have that stuff withheld. They can, in some cases, they can write off expenses and that kind of thing. They kind of want to fly under the radar screen and get away with it because it's cheaper and the Department of Labor um, is really coming down on people on that. So be very careful with that. What are the risks then for an employer not classifying properly? One of these agencies, usually the Department of Labor, will audit employers. And that means they come in and they want to look at your payroll records. They want to talk to the employees and they want to figure out if these people satisfy the requirements that we've discussed here. And if they find out that these are not really independent contractors, they're going to fine you and penalize you. Now, if they don't find that you did it intentionally, um, they're not probably going to hurt you but they will make you make it right, which means they'll make you go back for two years and they'll make you, you know, do pay the taxes you should have paid and pay the employees. So that's the second risk. The employees can hurt, can sue you. If uh, they've been misclassified, you're probably not paying them overtime. So uh, they can sue you for overtime under the Fair Labor Standards Act and state laws. That can get very, very expensive. Now you might say, okay, well, how are they ever going to prove they worked overtime? Here's what happens. The Department of Labor talks to the employees and they listen to the employees and they're not going to make the employees prove with exactitude how much overtime they've worked. They're going to take their employees word for it and they're going to make the employer pay. Um, so it can get very tricky. Um, if the employee sues you for overtime and unpaid wages, there are penalties that go along with that. And almost as important, maybe more important, they can recover their attorney's fees in a lawsuit they get very, very expensive. So, um, you know, this is not something to fool around with. Think long and hard before you hire somebody as an independent contractor. And if there's any doubt at all, uh, you ought to be talking to an employment lawyer. What should employers do then to keep them in compliance and out of your office, so to speak, right? You know, uh, you, you need to be very careful when you're hiring independent contractors. You need to go through the analysis that we've been discussing here. And, and you know, as I mentioned right at the beginning, this analogy of the, of the carpenter that's building a deck on your house is a really good one. Think about that every time. And is this, is this a, it, it, does this, is this that kind of situation or is it, you know, more like a full-time employee? Um, one of the things that's very important to do is to have a written independent contractor agreement if you're ever going to hire somebody on that basis. Um, and, and this really is uh, falls into the realm of don't try this at home, kids. Um, it gets complicated. The statutes that govern this are complicated. They have specific requirements. And with just a little bit of, of work from a lawyer, you can really reduce your risk dramatically. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you really need to be careful when you're hiring independent contractors. This really is for general information. Um, you know, to, for me to give you advice, you're going to have to retain me, and we're going to have to have a, uh, and and um, and I'm going to have to understand your situation to give you any any real advice. So I'm happy to educate, uh, but to give you advice, we need to we need to uh, have a talk and formalize our our relationship. So, what should employers consider when looking? 
at who they should establish as being their legal counsel? What are some things that you think, you know, when you're when you're diving into this, you need an uh, independent contractor agreement, you know, whatever that might be. What are some things that people should really consider when looking at that partnership? However, really rely on my network. Um, if I were you, I, I mean, you probably know. If you don't know lawyers, you probably know people that have hired lawyers, and you know they they're going to have an opinion. You know, they're going to say, "Call Colin; he's done a great job for me. That's a great recommendation." Then you know, do your homework on the internet and whatnot. Um, if if you know a lawyer and they don't do this kind of work, they're probably going to say, "I don't do this, but I know Colin, and he does," and that they're going to know whoever this lawyer is. And, and so those kind of recommendations I think are very valuable. The other thing I would do that I was spend some time talking to this person before you're hiring them. You know, is there anything else that you're like, Amanda, we really need to say this or um, floor is yours. Well, <laughs> you, you've covered all the bases very well. You asked all the right questions. Um, you know, uh, I think, uh, the departments of labor, federal and state have some great resources on their websites and, um, you know, uh, that, that certainly is no substitute for good legal counsel, but you can learn an awful lot uh, by getting onto those websites and they discuss independent contractors um, and they discuss a lot of other issues too. So that's a great resource. Anyway.